Down towards Kenny, but beautifully tackled. So too Corkamilas. Williams loses it, but I think it's going to be free kicked. He's just forward of centre. Ralph the target. Oh, almost uh, a casual attitude, but Marku is at the oh. back of the pack and he hits the post. Ralph went with the one hand, couldn't quite hold it. But then he laid a good ship at uh, yes. to allow Marku to come through, and it was a little bit inaccurate there. Alex, Alex Marku, he's got the long hair now. See a nice kick by Robert Evans right into the centre of the ground, and up they fly. Maloney over the ball, can't get a handball away. Liberatore under there, goes back, oh. and that's Nick. A little bit slow and lucky to get away with that. He went the wrong way too, didn't he? Turned right into trouble. He's so small. Well, you can't help but give you those away. You can't help but grab him right around the neck. Yeah, well, there's the kick by Liberatore out towards Bilchins, and he takes the mark. He gets the hand pass across to Graham Cordy. Graham Cordy to Darren Saunders. Saunders from centre wing brings it up towards uh, Big Emma Dunn, but chipping across in front is his teammate in Robert Cronaway and to take the mark about 25 to 30 metres out from goal and we'll be right behind him as he takes this kick as we look in replay. That was a good kick up by Darren Saunders and Grona Wagon getting away from his opponent, slid in on his knees and he's had a really quiet day as we can see by the... Again, but this time straight through a Grona Wagon. Muller taps it cleverly over the back. It's taken away by Aitken, pushed out wide towards the wing. Cordy is there. It's a hurried kick onto his left boot. And Carlton, through Kenny, are able to clear. Across to the long-haired Alex Marku. Ooh, he he goes one, wider too. again. Oh, it's on behind yeah. play there. Robert Granowagen gave uh, Alex Marku yeah, a that's beauty. That's unbecoming of Alex Marku, because that's the first time yes. I've ever seen him do anything like that. Well, he caught one right in the mush. He's caught plenty before, but he's usually retained his dignity. <laughs> dignity. Well, what's going to the umpire going to deliberate then? I think that was good umpiring. To uh, he was actually we'll see here on replay. There. There's the oh, Bruno Wagon knew he was coming too. <laughs> Up with the elbow. <laughs> oh, gee, I find that funny because Grano, Robert Bruno, we're going to be one of the nicest blokes you'd ever meet in your life. But he definitely gave just before that he well, gave. That doesn't mean a thing when you're out of the football ground. I know you change when you cross the line. I remember that vividly. As you see, Hitch on screen, Greg Hitch. Never got near you. Too quick for you, Don. You tried to get me a couple of times. So we see Cordy getting it across there to Rod McPherson. We haven't seen much of Rod McPherson today, have we? Maloney, I think that was. No, Maloney, was it? I'm sorry. He must be off the ground, Rod McPherson, as it's kicked wide. We'll try and pick him up in a moment, actually, as it comes wide. And this is, uh, well, I reckon he's close to best man on the ground. That's how well he's played. Michael Ford up towards the pocket. He's played, played a tremendous game, Michael Ford. He is off the ground, McPherson, Pete. Well, he... That's, that's rotten luck. There he is. Uh, Rod, he's been off the, the ground for a lot of today, and that's why we haven't seen him, of course. And uh, bad luck, because he's one of he's one of the key players in that side. There's Cork Emilis getting it out to shine. Back it comes to Road. He's done well, Peter. Yep. Oh, well, he's a good, excellent player in these games. That could have been a free kick to Cork Emilis for the umpire. You couldn't knock the umpires today, and uh, umpires Savile and Sheehan have done an excellent job. Two young umpires, and Billy Della has given all these young umpires a terrific go in league football. He's changed them. He's dropped blokes to the country. They've well, had that's a... not giving them a go if you no, change them and drop them to I the mean country. He's, he's dropped experienced guys and mm. brought up young guys and yeah. given them a taste of league football. In fact, we've had plenty in at World of Sport for that uh, umpire segment, haven't we? What's your and decision? What's your decision? Correct. Saunders. Oh, going through strongly as Emma Dunn. He gets a kick now. What will the bounce do? It goes over the top, but it was touched anyway. And a behind goes on the board. They've played well, Footscray, since half time. They should have had more goals on the board, actually. They've missed some sitters. Change about to take play. <laughs> Kenny Coming off. on, Neil Gagan. And going off, Kenny. Peter Kenny. Sh Sheldon. Who? Sh Sh Sheldon. Sheldon. <laughs> Aitken, the centre wing, tapped over the back. Oh, oh and they maintain control beautifully there. Corker Miller swings it in towards uh, the centre road. Back to Corker Miller. He'll have a pop shot, but it's a poor kick. 
drops in towards the pocket. And uh, Evans, I don't think, no, tried to mark that. It was touched, it was touched, touched off. Good. That was yeah. good play by Evans because he knew if he grabbed it, he was going to be caught holding the ball. So he just pushed it over the line. Yeah, good play by Robert Evans. Corkamilis tries to pluck it out of the air. Ashman, but the whistle had sounded. And it'll be against the Blues. Robert Evans should have come to league football uh, three or four years ago. He's 26 years of age. Has come across. He mightn't have been good enough. Three well, he wouldn't or have improved between 22 My and 26. Word, you can't would he? Improve. Frank Johnson improved. Uh, Frank Johnson. Yes. Who was a champion Port Melbourne when and he was he, about 18. And he became a very good player when he was at South. Bilchins towards centre wing. The pack flies down to the ground. Peter Road. Oh, he's had an excellent game. Peter Road on the left foot, out wide. Is Oja. He hasn't done a lot, has he? Uh, Quite Oja? day to day. Yeah. Well, that's who's he on? Is he on Ford or Eppleston actually at the moment? He brings it across. He's got to come back over the mark, the umpire is saying. And Darren Oja. Carlton realise they've got this game sewn up. 105 playing 69, and really they're just going through the motions. Liberatore off, McPherson on. I wonder if he's injured, uh, McPherson. So maybe he was just having a bad day because he's back on the ground with Liberatore off. He, they wouldn't bring him back on if he was unfit, surely. But still, there's uh, now. This is a great chance to see Warren Ralph and uh, get some sort of idea of his kicking ability because we're right behind him. Well, the cat camera shot on the side. Reminds me a lot of there Michael he is now. Yeah, he was a great kick. My word, he was. And let's see what he does with this one. Well, he kicked it far too much to the right and has missed, but he is a long kick. There he is, the former It's all Claremont. to do with timing, isn't it? The way he ran in then, he was just casual, but that's a timing. Yep, 16 Very 10. important timing. <laughs> Plays 10-9. <laughs> we'll bring you down to Colling was the kicking coach, I think, as we see coming in Michael Gallagher having a pot shot. Another Gallagher was a great player for uh, Carlton, of course. Uh, Adrian Gags. Gallagher, what a great rover he was to John Nichols. Evans towards uh, Sharon. Geez, kicked out beautifully today, Robert Evans. Oh, why did he hand pass that to a man that was covered? Gee. That was stupid play then. Mark Williams across to Kenny Sheldon, who kicks wide to Warren Ralph, and a beautiful lead. Evans is now playing on Ralph. Now let's have another chance to have a look. He's had 13 kicks, six marks and one handball. Good to see he's keeping up the full forwards average of handballs. He's had one. Well, let's see the kicking. Look at that concentration. His never ruffled, is it? <laughs> well, must be like wire as we see the kick, the drop, punt. Oh, he's hooked this one. It's still in play. There was a player that ran into the uh, point post there. And it's another point for the Blues. So on the scoreboard, we see Carlton just creep a little bit further in front, 16-12 to 10-9. Yes, nine minutes played in this final term, and uh, they haven't been able to add a goal as yet. A couple of behinds. That kick's not as good, but it goes over the top. They may get out of trouble. Cordy gets a hurried kick. Now McPherson is back on the ground. Oh, oh. bouncing ball. And it's a poor handball, but good interception by the big fella Gallagher. Goes short, finding Gagan. He's just come onto the ground, and he's a darn good reserves player. Into full forward, and the mark is taken by Ogier. He's going to go short because Corkamilis is loose right in front. Good, good play. play by Carlton. There's a good uh, trap by Gallagher. Spiro just did a Dermot Brereton and blew a kiss at uh, his opponent then. Gee, this must be the in thing in uh, football. What's that? Footscray 10 9 69. And it'll be Carlton through Ashman to go into attack. No, he'll hand it over to uh, the big fella Gallagher. Right from the centre. To half forward. Ralph was covered. And another ball up to take place. Well, the crowd building up, boys. It'll be what, 40 at the moment? It's hard to say at the MCG. What do you I, think? Can't, I can't, I can't pick the crowds MCG. at all. It's uh, a bit of space around. I'm, though, I'm, I think, Sandy, you're about right. I reckon 35 to 40,000 only at the moment. Up towards full foot Evans. Ah, oh, that was good football by the fullback. Getting it out towards half back and trying to keep it in was. Oh, it is still in play. Peter Road, but it was Ford getting it across. 
towards Maloney and then further afield towards Brian Cordy up to Saunders held said the umpire against Adrian Gleeson he might have hurt himself then Darren Saunders might have hurt his arm I think yes yep. he did bringing this one a high one up towards Jim Sewell from behind who tries to punch it to the ground Gallagher moves well for a big plug as he gets onto the left foot he kick off that nice is a kick. top kick oh Mark Williams should have marked that one on half forward <laughs> goes in after it once again Gagan, a funny sort of a hand pass to Ashman. Ashman to Cork Amelis. Spiro's got it at the 50 metre line. He wants to handball it. He does to Rod Ashman, who runs in, straightens up, stabs it low, and puts it through for a goal. No matter how you plan to spend your retirement, one thing you're going to want. First and Footscray's 11th there, 11 9 as Sheldon gets it out of the middle. The second attempt, the left foot high kick going towards uh, Kenny. He can't take it. Comes back to him again, however. Another link hand pass to Ashman. Ashman steady. Oh, their kicking is letting them down in these last few minutes. A very accurate early, Carlton, but uh, as you just said, Sandy, very inaccurate in this last quarter. It's bad football, bad kicking for goal. Certainly made your 200 point target no, look silly, Don. It does, and it makes me look real silly. That wouldn't be hard to do, though, would it? You beat no, me I didn't to say it. that, mate. You were back. <laughs> <laughs> he was. Big first. I oh, certainly oh, was. Oh, oh, was. Up towards Graham Cordy. He's got a ton of pace, but has had a poor day today, Graham Cordy. Up towards Vilchens, who comes out in the centre of the pack. Couldn't take the mark. Down to the ground it goes. There's Tatterson getting it to Gronawigan. Gronawigan looking for Maloney, but it's taken away far too easily for Carlton on that occasion by Starbuck. He gets it towards uh, Ashman. Ashman towards Muller. A beautiful long kick to Oja. Punched away by Evan. Look at the Carlton boys. And running. there's Muller backing up again. He gets it towards the half forward line. A chance for Carlton again through Kenny. Kenny straightens up from 45 metres out. He fires at goal. He uh, hooks it across his body and puts it through for one point. A shocking kick by Carlton. How many points do they kick? They've, they have kicked nine points in this last quarter. That's unbelievable. On a perfect day, one by, goal the, nine. by the way, for kicking for goal. It is a magnificent day here at the MCG for football. Tonight. And it augurs well for the big game between the Swans and Fitzroy. Good play. 19-17 to 11-9. From the centre, Somerville. Clear for Footscray. Down towards the left half forward flank. Aitken is there, however, for Carlton. Held whilst not in possession. And he'll be free kicked. well he's finishing the game off in fine style Sheldon plenty of support but elects to do it on his own to the half forward line out comes Kenny and takes the easiest of chest marks plays on straight away hooking it in towards full forward or oh, the Gallagher is there one grab two grab can't complete the mark it's Evans who gets a hurried kick to the outer side of the ground the bouncing ball eventually finishes with hitch Goes for a high and long kick. Aitken is there. Sewell also at the back. Couldn't take the mark. Kennedy now for Carlton. Gets it onto the right boot. Goes back up towards centre wing. And once again, we see the mark taken by Ian Aitken. Under a spot of pressure. 15 metres. Sees Aitken almost down to the right half forward flank. Carlton have got a man on their own down there. And Kenny, no one near him for 50 metres. Sheldon. Hooks over his shoulder. And this time out of bounds on the full. He's standing, he was standing about he was, five he is, metres out from goal. He still is. Still alone. No, no one bothered to pick him up. He was standing there for about five minutes on his own. As we see the long kick towards the half back line and Emmett Dunn, the captain coach, comes out to take the mark on half back flank. 22 minutes gone. 19 in this final quarter 1917 plays 11 9 with the ball on center wing it's punched away to Maloney he's caught that could be holding the ball that no it was over the line said the umpire so Pete it looks as though Carlton straight into the reserves grand final yeah hard Footscray to live to fight another day but they've got to take on that strong Hawthorne lineup that we saw yesterday right 
That's right. Melbourne are right out of it now. That's of Pete. course, yes. I just had to think because they changed the uh, they changed them around. They're not in line with the senior games as far as the no. actual finals. You've got to think who's in and who's out of the competition. Well, Footscray, uh, as Sandy said, play again next week against the Hawks. Do you? They, well, they beat the Hawthorne a couple of weeks yes, ago. I don't think they will next time, Peter. Do you? Well, it all well, I'd like to see the sides first. Yeah. Depends on whether Hawthorne, Hawthorne got win. a couple of injuries in the seniors. And yeah, so they might have to take... Will be oh, but yeah, that's right. That'll make the reserves the very stronger. strong, won't it? Yeah. My word. So I'd pick Hawthorne for sure. And obviously a lot of those Hawthorne players would be playing for a place in the grand in final, the grand so final. they'd perform a lot better than oh, what they would normally. Carlton into attack down towards... Uh, Ralph, who tapped it cleverly wide. This is looking dangerous for Footscray again as the long kick comes in from Burke. But he's wide and out of bounds again on the full. Michael Ford has kicked two goals for Footscray, streaming down from the half-back line. He's covered his man also. He's been a terrific player today. And there's a great mark to Neil Cordy, who, well, he's played a fair game, but certainly hasn't been uh, a dominant factor in this match. As he brings it up towards Grona Wigan, he's had a quiet day, Robert. And uh, a number of the Footscray players have been but you down, need a, You need a good centre-half forward or your centre-half forward playing well on this big ground of the MCG. In fact, in any game, if you've got a winning centre-half forward, you usually dominate the game. But it's hard to get a good centre-half forward right, because it's the, the hardest, hardest, position, hardest position to on play the on. Ground no doubt play. about That's that. Right. Groner Wagon, five kicks, five marks, three handballs. You think about how many champion centre-half forwards there have been yes, over the true. years. There have been very, very few. And if they are, Peter, the other interesting thing, they can do it for a couple of years. That's right. Well, Royce Hart, Hart. for a number of years. Robbie Walls was there. Alan Martello did it all his yeah. career. What? Until he went to Richmond. Played centre-half forward. Oh, Alan was a damn good centre-half oh, forward in, in finals for uh, Hawthorne. I reckon he was a very underrated player, uh, Big up Marty. Could have been a champion ruckman had he not been or so mobile. I would a champion ruckman. Yeah, I agree. Kenny at half forward. Gallagher oh, got a bit of a nudge. Footscray should get out of trouble and do through Eppleston. But uh, the score is on the board as far as oh. Carlton are concerned. Gleason almost plucks in a one-hander, but he's got plenty of support. Came from Road, who's had a ton of kicks. On to Kenny, looking for Oja. He, in turn, oh. looks for the free kick. Doesn't come his way, and it wobbles over the line. Should have got the free kick. For Peter Road, 19 kicks, 5 marks, and 9 handballs. Uh, good day's work by uh, Peter. The ball is on half-forward flank, 19-17 to 12-9. And, uh, well, Carl, gee, they'd be the hottest favourites in history to win the reserve grade. Premiership. Although I suppose if Hawthorne, that position before. if Hawthorne got there, uh, maybe they'd be hard to beat if they got their, their, that really strong side in. There's Jimmy Searle in front of the Melbourne member stand, ducking back onto the right hand. Craig Somerville, he hasn't done a lot today. Don. Started well, Peter, in the first quarter, yeah. the first 15 minutes, as a lot of his teammates did, but then they just went walkabout. Yeah, they've had a lot of very, very quiet plays. Somerville has had eight kicks and three handballs. Well, for a guy who plays. There's a little man playing on the ball. Well, that's just not enough. Now, here's Michael Ford. I reckon he is that close to the best man on the ground, even though he's in the losing side. He brings it up towards full forward. No one contesting there against Dunlop. He's got a bit of fire in his game, too. Yes, as I like that. But uh, I wonder where he's been. He must have been off the ground because he was very quiet. Yes, they he started, was. They started him off on the bench, uh, on the ball, and I thought he did reasonably well, and then he was changed. Oh, Alan. Alan. Gee, Chris. <laughs> The sun must have got in his eyes as Footscray plays towards goal and off target again. So that's another point to the score. The sun's just coming out here at the MCG. Michael Ford, 131, playing 82. There's no sun at all. It's overcast. It's a great day. These were the days that footballers dream about for oh, a final. Yeah, a final. Oh, come you out never, there. You, you never get hot, do you, Peter? Nah. You, you, you know, you hate playing Mc, in the summer pre-season. person up towards full forward. Here's a chance for Sewell to have a putt shot at the goals, and he's put it through for a goal to Footscray, and that's Jimmy Sewell's third. Well, the, the game's all fresh. over, but they're trying. I'm just reminiscing. Sorry to cut across you. 131 playing 88. The smell of fresh-cut grass 
in September. Beautiful. Wasn't it? You know, just about finals time, you're training and the grass is just starting to grow. It was fantastic. That I'll tell you what, I the hated grass. the smell of it in 1970 what? when that siren went for the end of the grand final and I was on the ground. No, we're talking about training the oh, leader. Training we're not night. worried about Beautiful. your grand finals you missed out on. But we're just talking about the build-up <laughs> to the finals. It was a terrific atmosphere, isn't it? It was a ah. good time to train because the chill's gone off the air yeah. and players really did apply themselves. From the centre, Carlton looking to go into attack again through Ashman. Goes wide. This is Burke looking for Ralph. Can he keep it in play? He does with a handball towards Mark Koo. Oh. Lost it again. And again, Footscray out of trouble with ease down towards center wing but beating uh, rod mcpherson over the line was there ever any grass on that ground you used to play on where you, are you talking about glen free oval where you've trained on yeah that's right no there was ever guy only ever played on it when it was just complete mud used to slow them down they couldn't run away there could they it was like a little sardine i'll tell you camp. what you couldn't hide i know it was shocking oh, it was small but oh. i'll tell you what about the glen Ferry oval it had atmosphere. magnificent atmosphere. There was the train going past <laughs> there on that wing, and the crowd, was, you fellas, are they right on top yeah, of it. It was, and especially when you're coming home to the grandstand. Alex Marku charging it after the ball. Now, the hand pass is wide to, was it Bradley Shine? I think it was, up towards Gallagher. Oh, no mark, but he's he, done he, well. He moves well for a big bloke. He got onto the right foot, and there's the siren. Going into the grand final is the Carlton, is the Carlton side, and Carlton have won this game. On the scoreboard, we see 19-18, 132 the Blues to Footscray, 13-10, a total of 88. All right, to find victory to Carlton, as Peter said, straight into the grand final. Footscray live to fight another day. They will play Hawthorne in the Army Reserve Cup preliminary final.